Hello, beautiful people. My name is Cynthia. I share information that will help your transition into the UK to be as smooth as possible. If you have not joined my community, you are missing a lot. There are some information you get here that you will not get in any other channel. I am beating my chest and telling you that, that you might not get it in any other YouTube channel. So why not join our community so that you can get updated on what is happening you can get some ideas that can help you grow in your career or in whatever you want to pursue so today i just want to give you some of the things that you should avoid especially when it comes to the health and care visa routes you just have to be careful guys i always tell people in my community that anything that sounds like it's not true or is questionable you have to investigate properly before you delve into it i'll be telling you six of the situations you might need to prepare for if you're coming on a health and care visa route the first one is that there are so many fake care agencies seriously there are a lot of them and individuals claiming to give you cos <laughs> just be very very careful of them sometimes they will ask you for some things that are odd and not in line with what care workers need that is why if an agency is going to do your application for you you need to follow up properly tell them to copy you in whenever an employer is sending a message so that you can be updated on what is actually happening ask your colleagues join groups where other people seeking the health and care visa are in on facebook on telegram there you can get some ideas on oh this is not looking odd why would my care agents be asking me this they have for people of their life savings and this thing is just so so horrible so just be careful please do not be so desperate the second thing you need to understand is that the uk has been on a spray <laughs> revoking a lot of licenses and because of that you might have been given a cos and a skilled worker visa to come into the uk to work and once you arrive at the airport you realize that your care agency does not have the license to sponsor you it means going back sometimes you would come into the uk and then your care agency will tell you that we don't have the license to sponsor you anymore before you know it the home office will send you a letter or an email stating that you have 60 days to switch to another visa or leave the uk this is the story of so many families who have spent a lot of money sometimes eight thousand ten thousand they have paid to this employers and they did not know that they don't have the license to sponsor so just be aware of this and be properly prepared the next thing i'm going to talk about is that so many care agencies have abandoned their employee you would come into the uk to work as a carer or a care worker and you just find out that you are being given 15 hours of work a week Oh my goodness, that's heartbreaking. What would 15 hours of work a week do for you and your children? What will it do for you and your family? It's difficult to survive on minimum wage with 15 hours of work a week. And you will see these care workers running around looking for another care agency to work for part-time. And you know there are rules attached to a skilled worker visa. With a skilled worker visa, you cannot choose to do a job that is not related to the aspect or the code at which you are sponsored to work in the UK. You have to follow the UK guidelines on how many hours of work you can do with another care agency. Because if you exceed it, it could affect your indefinite leave to remain. You know that it's very heartbreaking if you spend five years in this country and it's time to renew or to get your indefinite leave to remain. And then you are being denied based on things like this. Keep encouraging your employer to give you more shifts. Make sure that you don't spend more hours than usual. I think it's 20 hours of work that you can do until 27th of August. Then they will renew and know whether you can extend the 20 hours of work with, with another care agency. Please try and make sure that you do the right thing so your indefinite leave to remain will not be affected. 
Another thing I want to mention is that if you come in to work as a carer in the UK or a care worker in the UK and your employer is not giving you enough shifts, it's advisable that you report to the home office. But while reporting to the home office, be aware that you might be told to go back to the home country when because the purpose of you being in the UK is to be a carer. And if you cannot get any other job as a carer and you report to the UK, they might say, oh, since you can't get any other job, then go back to your home country. At the same time, there is a borderline of should I keep my mouth shut? If you keep your mouth shut, you are putting yourself in trouble too because you are aware of your situation and you still stayed in that situation. So once you come into the UK and your employer is not forthcoming in giving you shifts, you can try looking for another sponsor or another person that will give you a certificate of sponsorship so that you can carry on working in the UK. Another thing you need to be aware of is that if the license of the care agency that employed you has been revoked. It means that you would receive a letter from the home office stating that you have 60 days to switch to another visa or you would have to leave the UK. So bear that in mind that 60 days is not a long time. That's two months. You have to do all you can to switch to another employer. There are some people that are not aware of this because an agent did all the applications for them. And when the home office sent that letter or the email, it went to the agent. And the agent did not relay that message to you. That is another problem. You might be currently in the UK and you will not know that your 60 days have already started counting. So this is something that I always preach to people. Please be part of every application process you are involved in. Don't just submit all your documents to an agent and say, oh, do everything for me when the visa is out and I'll just march in. Know the process. Know what leads to what. Ask your agent questions. Be knowledgeable on how the UK system works. And if you're knowledgeable on how the UK system works, when you come to the UK, you'll be able to Look for a job yourself without anybody's help. If you're on the health and care visa routes, the only reason when you can take up roles that are not under the health and care visa route is if you work as a volunteer or it's unpaid. What it means is that if you're under the health and care visa route, you're a carer and maybe your dream is that you want to be able to switch to tech or switch to another area that is your dream but you're using this route to be able to settle in the uk so that you can pursue your dream maybe you want to work as an engineer for formula one whatever your dream is i would let you know that you cannot do that job unless you work as a volunteer which means you will not be paid for it at the end of that five years when you've gotten your indefinite leave to remain you can still show that you have relevant work experience in that area of specialization that you have passion for. I'm trying my best to explain this thing to you so that you know that you don't need to get stuck as a care worker for the rest of your stay in the UK. You can always switch to other career options and you can do that by getting certifications along the way while doing your care job. You can do that by picking up work experiences as a volunteer. Just know that some people have had their indefinite leave to remain application refused or denied just because they broke some of these rules that you should be aware of and is expected that you should know. You wouldn't want to spend five years in the UK and find out that you don't qualify to settle in the UK, but you thought you qualified to settle, if that makes sense. I also observed that for many people who pay a lot of money to come into the UK, 8,000, 6,000, 10,000 to come into the UK and work as a carer. I found out that some of these care agencies that take that money do not have enough clients. They created that business for the sole purpose of getting money from foreign nationals to give them a job in the UK, which they don't have clients, enough clients or jobs or shifts for you, which is so, so sad and heartbreaking. It is really, really greedy and sad for someone to treat another human being like this. Please stay safe and protect your life savings. Thank you and bye-bye.